Hi, my name is Brian Caffo, and this is the lecture on multiplicity and multiple comparisons. So in this lecture, we're going to go fishing. And uh, as a homework problem, I'd like you to read this XKCD comic, comic number 882. And it's really a great description of multiple comparisons. And so uh, I won't rehash it here because it's a long one. But uh, go read that. That's part of your homework. It's pretty funny. So what is multiple comparisons? Multiple comparisons is the idea of repeatedly doing hypothesis tests until one comes up significant, okay? And this sounds nefarious, but it can be often done with the best of intentions, right? And, and multiple comparisons issues can creep in in unexpected ways. So to just give you an example of multiple comparisons, uh, that's sort of famous in the field that I work in is someone took a dead salmon and put it in a functional magnetic resonance imaging scanner and they ran the pixel, pixel by pixel analysis actually it's three dimensions so it's often called a voxel instead of a pixel they ran a voxel by voxel analysis and checked for statistical significance at each voxel of whether or not brain activation existed and they found significant things and the reason they found significant things is because of a lack of adjustment for multiple comparisons okay so so and of course there was no brain activation because it was a dead salmon so multiple comparisons this basically just arises from applying many tests and focusing on the significant ones. That's the negative aspect of multiple comparisons. But basically, the idea of multiple comparisons exists just from doing a lot of tests. Even if all the tests are null, the fact that you will just get some rejections by chance, just, just by uh, randomness. So this can arise from fitting too many models. This can arise from looking at too many quantities of interest. Like in our fish example, they just simply looked at too many voxels. Um, or not too many, they just didn't appropriately control for it. Or I think the nefarious version of multiple comparisons, the most nefarious version, is fishing expeditions. And that's basically testing hypotheses without, or t testing everything without a priori hypotheses and just trying to focus in on those ones that are just significant. So that's, that's the most negative version of multiple comparisons. You have a large data set, you want to explain an outcome, you look at every variable you have, every combination of vari variables with lots of models, pick out the small subset of significant ones and report them as if you hadn't looked at all the others. And I think everyone can agree that there's some problem with doing something like that. But I also want to emphasize multiple comparisons is not intrinsically, in looking at lots of hypothesis tests, is not intrinsically a bad thing to do. The bad thing to do is to do a lot of hypothesis tests and not be upfront and account for the fact that you've done a lot of hypothesis tests. And that's basically the point of this lecture. And I want to give you the easiest fix possible. There is a vast literature on multiple comparisons, but the easiest fix is uses a, a, an inequality that's named after the uh, mathematician Bonferroni. And uh, this, because it's named after his inequality, it's called the Bonferroni correction. And the easiest way to execute a Bonferroni correction is if you have a bunch of p-values, simply multiply your p-values by the number of tests that you're performing. So for example, if you perform 10 tests and one of the p-values is 0 0.01, then that p-value is now 0 0.10, okay? Because you've multiplied it by 10. So the Bonferroni correction is highly robust and it works in, in all circumstances. The only problem is it's quite conservative. So you can, you can imagine if you, you, know, you perform a thousand tests, you're multiplying all your p-values by a thousand, it's unlikely you're gonna get anything significant. So um, the result of the Bonferroni correction is often that it's very conservative. It tends to err on the side of declaring fewer things significant. But it's the easiest thing, and then if you want to get into harder versions of multiple comparisons, you can look into further reading. You can uh, read up on things like false discovery rates and um, um, uh, things like we actually had a, a relatively well-known um, multiple comparisons paper come out of this department uh, from the uh, faculty member named David Duncan. 
And Duncan's multiple range test is an example in ANOVA of multiple comparisons corrections. But I think all of those are much harder than the simple Bonferroni correction, so that's what I would go with now. Um, one thing I would mention about the Bonferroni correction is that it doesn't give you any guidance on what number to multiply by. So if you do a bunch of tests and some are related and, an, and another set are, are kind of unrelated, there are two groups, should you m aggregate all of those tests together and count, you know, say if you did 10 tests of this sort and 10 tests of this sort for a totally different hypothesis, do you aggregate all of them together and multiply all your p-values by 20? Or you just say, well, this is one separate investigation from this other separate investigation, and so we multiply th these by 10 and these by 10. The Bonferroni correction gives no guidance on this problem. The Bonferroni correction doesn't tell you what is the right number of tests to multiply by, and that is an inherent problem. So the best advice I can give on that is to be your own critic. You know, be a critic of the results that you have and include all the tests that you think a critic of yours would want you to include as penalizing for having looked at the data. Okay, so again, I would just reiterate there's a vast literature on some other techniques for handling multiple comparisons, but again, the Bonferroni correction is the simplest and easiest one. And if you're managing someone who's done a lot of tests or looked at a lot of models, fit a lot of models, the easiest thing to do is when you're looking at the output and you discuss the number of models they fit and the number of parameters they looked at, you can just kind of do a rough calculation, you know, round it up to the easiest number to multiply by and use that correction.